We couldn't be more proud to have Foxconn's 8K technology LCD panels for the first time ever outside of Asia made in the USA, proudly here in the state of Wisconsin. Thank you, Mr. President. Got my first White House press credential, or White House event press credential, to go to the Foxconn groundbreaking. Um, and they put him in a fucking cage. Yeah, and I got to hang out in the press pen. So that was a lot of fun. It's literally um, just a cage. Yeah, so Trump came to town, so Foxconn is building the, apparently one of the biggest, uh, like factories in the world here in Wisconsin. Eighth wonder. I, I think we can say this is, we can say the eighth wonder of the world. This is the eighth wonder of the world. And there's a lot of people opposed to it, but a lot of people have supported it. And ultimately it did get enough Democrat support, especially the Democrats living in the Milwaukee area. And so we're going to have a big ass fucking screen factory so they're gonna make 8k screens and all sorts of screens for phones computers whatever tvs and uh yeah so trump flew in to meet up with uh the homeboys paul ryan and scott walker take their golden shovels and take a little chunk of dirt out of the ground and also terry gow who's the uh CEO of Foxconn. Oh, yeah, the white dude, or the... No, no, he's the... The real CEO. The real CEO, yeah. yeah they got to do that, like, actually started it. Yeah, not um, the... The American... Placeholder yeah. American CEO. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh... They were all there, and they... I, yeah, so I applied to go to this, and it was pretty intense. Like, this is the first time I've ever been to one of these events. Um, and yeah, so I had to go to, like, this other... This community college that was, like, five miles away and then get bussed to the Foxconn building from there. And Foxconn just has this, like, warehouse set up. I don't know if it's, like, if they just bought the building just to, like, have a showroom. Mm. Or just for this event, or if they built it. I don't even know. Like, no one even really knew that that building was there, but it's just this, like, big, empty warehouse, basically, that says Foxconn on it. But then they had a bunch of stuff set up, which, yeah, I'll have some of the clips in here. Oh, my God, the That's creepy. <laughs> oh, it's this one right here. I gotcha. Whoa, that, it, it, I didn't even notice that it follows you. Wow, creepy. tech and shit which was kind of cool but um there's just a whole bigger thing to this and i mean there's no doubt that there will be some economic activity yeah. generated from it but it's just like is it worth the cost because this is like an unprecedented amount of subsidizing that the state has done the county has done the village has done and actually i mean we've talked about this like a lot as it's progressed but like one thing is the town gave such a big like tax incremental financing deal that the moody's rating association just had to downgrade their rate because like there's a limit like a township can't make that big of an agreement because it's just inherently so risky for such a small town because it's like I think they give them like an eight hundred million dollar tax break over twenty something, twenty five years or something like that. So it's just ins and it's like a twenty five thousand person village, I think. So it's like I don't know, maybe not even that big, but still, it's just kind of insane. I mean, and will Foxconn be able to pull it off? Like, yeah, if you give them the benefit of the doubt on like all the numbers they used, yeah, or but, they could turn into like a internment camp in the future, just a big ass one. Yeah. And so people, Foxconn, that's what probably most people know the name from, is like, they have a Foxconn village in 
China, and I mean they have factories, I guess, in Eastern Europe, India, a few in China and Tai Taiwan, and then in Brazil. Um, <clears throat> and so now, now come to Wisconsin. Yeah. So, and that's what I think it's kind of about is like they want to be in this market. So, because I mean, if you think about it, it's like they've got if they're in Europe, Asia. Yeah, but they go like, South America. So South America is so close that it's really not hard. Like it's basically just America, but you, Europe, like yeah. You, but to be in the Midwest, that's like the cent. Like Chicago is considered like the central hub yeah. of like all. Yeah, that's because they won basically like, won the the bidding. But let's say, fucking like in India, they have to serve over a billion people, so they need a fucking factory to do that shit. In China, there's so many fucking people. They need a factory there. And then one for Europe, and then one for South America, which can also serve to Africa and also serve to to um, North America. So yeah, they got it coming already. This will just make it a lot easier. But is it is it worth it for them? Even they kind of made it worth it, but. Well, yeah, because they're, get, they're getting such... And, I mean, when they were first considering... Like, they said they are coming to the U.S. And they kind of looked at some other spots. And, like, basically everybody was kind of making these backroom, closed-door offers. And apparently Wisconsin made the best. Because uh, and good old Scotty boy, <laughs> Scott Walker, really pushed to make that happen. I think he... he's Since he's gotten elected, he's been talking about jobs starting jobs yeah, he wants, like he always that was like his guarantee elected. that he was going to start like he was going to create 250 i can't even remember the number i thought it was like 250,000 jobs or something in his first term or something like that and he came up like way short of that but he also that was based on he was planning to open these mines um which you probably wouldn't have even created that many jobs but mines for what uh iron ore this was like years ago but the native tribes that live no. up there just shut it down, like because it would have been it would have like devastated their way of life basically. Yeah. So, and they fought it enough that eventually the mine company just pulled out because there just yeah. was like legal challenge after legal challenge and protest after protest. And and honestly, those tribes like, I mean, have you ever been to like if you if they try to pull some legislation like they show up and like. <laughs> And I mean, though, a lot of them have really close deals. Like they make a lot of, because they have a lot of land in Wisconsin, so they make a lot of deals with like the government. And I don't think that you know the state government wants to piss them off. Like it would be, it wouldn't be a good deal. I mean, Scott Walker probably didn't care, but I think you know the whole legislature is like, oh yeah, maybe it's probably not a bad or a good idea. But I mean, it was also the company pulled out, so Walker and all the yeah. Republicans in the legislature probably would have been down to just keep going for it. But it was fine. The company finally said, "Fuck it." So, but anyway, so. Walker's always come up short on his like promise to create a bunch of jobs, and I think he really saw Foxconn as like yeah. the way to do it. Like, and he like wants he's coming up for election on in a few months here, and yeah, I think he really is planning to point to this as his yeah. big. But then what was kind of weird about it is like Trump. Guess what? Still he yeah, he just yeah. took all the credit for like the whole thing. He said that like he was basically working on it like during the campaign and like made it happen. No, and, like, he fucking did it. But, so I had this incredible company going to invest someplace in the world, not here necessarily, and I, I will tell you they wouldn't have done it here except that I became president, so that's good. But they wanted to do it someplace now in the United States. And I immediately thought of the state of Wisconsin. Terry came up, fell in love with the people, fell in love with the location, fell in love with the concept here. You know, he's going to make robotics here. They're doing many other things, including full television sets. They're doing many things here, and they'll do a lot of expansion. But I had to hand off the ball. Either way, I mean, right? yeah, you made a point that, like, Walker and Paul Ryan are probably fine just giving Trump the credit because, like, when the whole thing fucks up, like, then they can just dump it all on Trump anyway. Yeah. So. Well, trust me, you find a way to put it back on them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so, you know, what I was saying is, like, um, I. We got there. First of all, I had to get, like, 
checked in. They had to like go through my bag and like they had to, the dog came like smelled all my shit and then like had to go through a metal detector and all this. But then the White House people like made all the press go right. You couldn't even like I was saying they had this whole showroom floor set up and I got to walk through there for a second. But like. So they don't let the media walk around and like check out all the stuff that's set up? Like what the hell? Just gotta go right to the pen. That's wild. I, I just don't get it. Like why is all that stuff set up? We're stuck in this little pen, so... Maybe we'll be able to walk around once we They didn't even let us like stop. You didn't even we had to march straight to the pen and then just stay in the pen. And then when I went to like, I had to go to the bathroom, like the lady was just standing by like the gate and I had to, she like looked at me when I walked over and I'm like, all right, the bathroom? She's like, oh, okay, right over there. It's like, and I heard her like talking to, I don't know if it was secret service or just like extra security or whatever, but she was like describing some guy, another reporter that like wasn't, that she was apparently missing or something. So they were fucking on it, which is just creepy. And like, fuck these dudes. Yeah, you can't like, I don't know if it's to punish the press or if it's just like- Just they, to make sure you guys don't do some shit you're not supposed to do. We're all set up. Like and fucking so, cattle. Yeah, we seriously were. It was crazy. And I talked to this other reporter from ABC and he said it's that's just basically the norm. He actually said like that was more lax than some of the other ones that he goes to. And that they you, they don't even let you go to the bathroom, he said, in some cases. <laughs> Which, what the fuck? Plus, there was, like, yeah, a bunch of catering and shit, and, like, servers walking yeah, around. Yeah, I saw pictures of that. And then they didn't even let the reporters have any of the food, like... And we had to throw all our drinks away. You couldn't bring liquid in. I, did, I was able to bring a bag of chips in, thank God, but... Anyway, it was a weird experience, and... Will you do it again? Not anytime soon, but... But yeah, and then I went to this protest after. And I too value Doc. In a world of complex people here, we can process more than one thought at a time. Yeah. I learned that a while ago. Oh. We, can com we, we can process more than one thought at a time. But we can value jobs and we can value the ecology. We can value nature. We can value our environment. We can value people's private property rights. We can value basic rights and we can still have jobs. We don't need a giant corporation to bring us jobs. We, Racine has the lowest unemployment rate in the area. You know, people, people uh, corporate companies here are hiring for higher wages because they can't find enough workers. So we don't need a giant uh, LCD manufacturing company to have jobs. So I do value jobs, but, but what at what cost? At what cost do we want these jobs? My name is Alicia Lorta. I am from Kenosha and I am a youth activist. Um, I decided to come out here today to join this demonstration against Foxconn because I realize the corruption that Scott Walker um, and the Trump administration is doing um, across the country, but also now it's hitting locally to Wisconsin um, people. I'm also here to voice my concern about the environment and our beautiful Great Lakes that they're tapping into um, and hurting. Um, but I'm also here because I realize that this demonstration um, is allowing for other platforms to come out and speak about issues that are important in our country right now. Um, we have indigenous people here and we have people from the LGBTQ plus community, um, people like me who are talking about gun reform. Um, so I think this demonstration um, is very well rounded and it's a great opportunity for people to come out here, speak their voices, um, especially for the youth to come out here and say, you know, we don't agree with this, we don't want you to come into our state um, and hurt our people but also hurt our beautiful Great Lakes. Yeah, and so um, the, the fact that Foxconn is going to be using uh, it's like 7 million gallons a day or yeah. something like that, so that is a big concern for you? That's a big concern. It's definitely a big concern. Um, our Great Lakes need to be protected. 
um, they don't need to be harmed anyway, especially for a corporation that's just going to come from another country into the United States and harm our beautiful Great Lakes. Um, I don't agree with that at all. I think we need to be protecting our environment and protecting the world um, overall, and especially since it is so close to home. Um, I think Wisconsin people need to be very, very concerned. Okay. Um, are you? Is there any outcome you're hoping for? Right now, um, I know there's a lawsuit challenging the, or saying that the it violates the Great Lakes Compact. Are you following that at all, or hoping that there are any other challenges to the? Yeah, hoping to see what this will change. Yeah. Well, I hope this demonstration, for one, will say something to Scott Walker that we don't agree, um, and that what they did with the Great Lakes. Um, is not good. It's bad. It's really bad and that American people don't want anything to do with it. I hope that this demonstration says something. We had a lot of people come out um, and I think it, I think that I want them to know that it's not okay. Mm -hmm. And I think I want them to know that we're not happy with it. Um, and hopefully, I think it's still going to be built. Um, but I hope that they know that this was a smart decision on their on their side. All right, thank you. Thank you. There's this environmental issue that people are really concerned. Fox County is going to use like seven million gallons a day. Yeah. That's going to get pumped from Lake Michigan, and then apparently, like a little bit more than half of it is going to get returned. But then some of it's just going to like go. Some of it's just going to get evaporated and shit, but... So, people are really worried about it. The DNR approved it and said that it's not, like... That the, basically, that it can it's doable. Like, it can be handled, and then it's not, like, dangerous. But then also... Uh, it's said that because of... There's been, like, a declining... Like, industrial declining manufacturing industry over the years so that like because there's already been like a loss like this will you know like it's been able to handle this much yeah. before so, so it will be cool yeah and so either way it's gonna be, so there's a legal challenge to it there's this thing called the Great Lakes Compact and that's between like two Canadian provinces and then all the Great Lakes states like sign a, signed a pact that you couldn't pump any create any new uses for pumping out of the Great Lakes for like this large unless it was for a residential use mm. and, and this, this is, is clearly not thing. for a residential use but well, I did a story for this on this radio station Wart a few weeks ago and like I guess what could ultimately happen is the city of Racine could just like annex the whole town of Mount Pleasant so that it just wouldn't be Mount Pleasant anymore, it would just be part of racing. That's just doing that. And then, right. yeah, I know, but, like, just, that would be, if if it came down to that, and, like, they, the courts wouldn't let them pump the water out, like, then they could just do that. So either way, it's, like, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. Racine would probably do it, because the Racine mayor, Corey Mason, who is a Democrat, and actually, like, he used to be a state representative, and, like, seemed like a pretty progressive dude, and I used to, like, see him talking stuff before but I'm sure he is but it's like this is his town and this is gonna be like the biggest probably I don't know I haven't talked to him I don't know what his reasons really are for buying in but yeah. he supports it and so I'm sure if it comes down to it like if he's it works, gonna hell yeah what well, if it doesn't fuck well yeah and so that's kind of the big there's so much investment into it and like it's kind of weird cause however you cut the numbers it's like some people say it's gonna be $200,000 Per, like Wisconsin taxpayers are going to pay two hundred thousand dollars per job created, I think like per year, sure. something like that, or, or at least over the life. Some I don't know. There's a lot of different ways you can cut the numbers because like the way the Republicans are looking at it is that they're including all of this, all of the other economic growth, like not just Foxconn, but like all the like surrounding businesses and like all the truckers and stuff mm -hmm. like and they're saying that's all gonna which it will but it's like those are always like a little bit harder variables yeah. to nail down and like and so anyway scott walker said at the thing that it's a return <coughs> of every one dollar the taxpayers spend they get 18 dollars back and so that's using like walker's most mm -hmm. liberal numbers but it's like if they use the most conservative numbers yeah it's like 
a huge subsidy and like a huge cost for the jobs. But anyway, it's gonna happen, and yeah, so yeah, Wisconsin's yeah. gonna be uh, the next home of another Foxconn factory. So, I mean, there is a chance it could not happen, but I mean, the groundbreaking was yesterday, so yeah, it's, it's like just, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think that's our show. But yeah, well, no, and so one thing, like I was gonna say, is uh, Trump said it's called it the. Eighth, eighth wonder, wonder of the yeah. world, so yeah, I guess we're gonna have the eighth wonder of the world to be a Foxconn factory. That's a big ass fucking factory. That's yeah. what, yeah, not the Taj Mahal or anything. Just yeah. a big ass factory. Just a big fucking box, basically. Yeah. Um, but oh, I think I did, did I say this? But like Foxconn, probably people first heard of it because yeah, they have like these really crazy working conditions mm-hmm. and like people live on the campus like in these tiny little houses, like four people in like a little room. And then they work like 12 hours a day. And so I think it was like in 2012, a bunch of Foxconn factory workers jumped off the roof. And that got like huge news that working conditions are so bad and Chinese factory workers are jumping off the roof. And then Foxconn put nets around the building so that like it couldn't happen anymore. But then also like vowed that they would like change their ways and make... And Apple was under huge scrutiny mm. too because that's when Apple and Apple still they still make I think all the iPhones and yeah. the iPads so it's like Apple was getting a lot of pressure too and so they were like oh we're gonna we're gonna really try to work with them and make sure working conditions improve and I remember on the Apple website like they had like on the front page for like a while after that they had like a thing of the updates and mm. shit I think people mostly forgot about it I'm sure it's like changed but probably not that much. But so that's like a question of like how it will be here too. What will the working conditions nah, be? Here it would have to be a lot better because people won't take that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's also been the question too. Is like is there even a, enough workers here that mm-hmm. want that job? Probably Milwaukee is kind of having some hard times right now. They've yeah. been really declining. Uh, some of the suburbs have been doing really well. but And this isn't an even... This is in a suburb, but... Anyway, um... Pretty much talked that the hell out. Yep. Peace. Today we're seeing the results of the pro-American agenda. America first. Make America great again. All those hats. Greatest phrase ever used in politics, I suspect, right?